All right, so here's a really interesting problem. Are these two paintings by the same artist? Um, and I think an even more interesting problem is, can you get a computer to make that decision? And can you get the computer to make that decision just by having it look at thousands of paintings and telling it uh, this painting's by one artist and this painting's by another artist? Can the algorithm learn by examining a whole bunch of paintings to tell whether two paintings are by the same artist? Um, so two and a half years ago, when I started thinking about this problem, neural networks were, they were actually pretty good at like taking an image and, and classifying it, telling you, you know, this is a picture of a cat, or this is a picture of a dog, or this is a picture of a car. Um, but the algorithm was pretty dumb about it, and it basically treated every part of the image sort of equally. There is no mechanism to go in and identify uh, this might be a more informative part of the image than another. And uh, paintings are interesting because uh, they have information at different scales. There's information at the scale of a brush stroke, but also at the scale of the composition and the color palette. And so I thought looking at paintings might be a good um, problem, or a good data set to motivate developing attentional neural networks. Um, and so uh, when I decided, okay, this is an interesting problem, uh, maybe I'm not the only one who's interested in trying to solve it. So I went to Kaggle and I said, uh, hey Kaggle, uh, how do you think about hosting a competition to identify whether two paintings are by the same artist? And Kaggle said yes. So uh, then I went to wikiart.org and I asked them, hey, um, could I like scrape your website and download a whole bunch of pictures? And wikiart.org, uh, call before you dig. And wikiart.org said, uh, okay, but you might want to keep it to one painting every five seconds. So I wrote a little scraper in Beautiful Soup and Three weeks later, I had uh, 100,000 paintings sitting on my hard drive. Um, so this is a supervised learning problem. And the way that you normally think about supervised learning is you, you, know, you, you show the algorithm, a convolutional neural network, you show this algorithm an image, and then you say, uh, you know, is this painting by Vermeer, or is this painting by Da Vinci, or is this painting by Van Gogh? And uh, so you have one column for each class. But in fact, there's a, a nicer way to set this problem up uh, using what's called a Siamese neural network. So what you do is you, uh, you take the convolutional neural network and you show it an image, and then you take that same convolu convolutional neural network and you show it another image, and you take the outputs from those um, two iterations of the convolutional neural network, glue them together with another neural network, and then say, uh, make a prediction, is, are these two paintings by the same artist? And the cool thing about setting the problem up this way is that your algorithm can learn to extrapolate to artists that it's never seen paintings by. And I think that's really powerful. Um, so one of the challenges to setting the uh, competition up this way is that uh, if you have 200,000 paintings or 20,000 paintings in your test data set, if you ask um, your competitors to compare every image in the test set to every other image in the test data set, that's going to be like, um, like half a billion images almost, and that's really kind of a lot of comparisons. So I had to figure out a way to um, uh, cut down the, the number of comparisons. But you have to be a little bit careful about doing this, because Kaglers are really smart, and they're going to exploit any leaks if you hand it to them. So uh, what I've actually plotted here is um, a comparison of like every, uh, I picked 100 paintings by like uh, 20 artists, and then I said, um, I'm going to compare painting zero to painting one. I'm going to compare painting zero to painting two. And that's how I've constructed this, uh, this plot. And so every time two paintings are by a different artist, the, the square is blue. So actually what happens is most of your comparisons are these two paintings are not the same artist. Most of the, the plot is blue. And uh, you don't want to just like randomly throw out only blue uh, comparisons because what you're actually going to do is hand people information about um, when, uh, when paintings are by the same artist. And the way you can think about that is you can, um, so you can look at the white dots in the, in the um, sort of blow up in the bottom left, and uh, what you're doing there is you're, the white dots are like um, painting A compared to painting B, and then underneath the diagonal sort of on the mirror image, it's painting B compared to painting A. And then so you have A to B, B to C, and C to A. And what you can do to, if, if, if there's, a, there's a leak, if a competitor can go in and uh, look for, uh, it, of any three of these white squares, if any three of those are in the, the requested in the test data set, actually the odds are pretty good that those three paintings are all by the same artist. So without even looking at the images, they could exploit this leak to do well at this competition. And I didn't want that to happen. So what I had to do is actually think of a clever way to whittle down the number of comparisons. And what I ended up doing was uh, to actually use metadata that I got from WikiArt 
to identify similar paintings. And so the, the metadata included things like the genre or their style. So what I did was I went through and I constructed a vector for each artist that was like the fraction of the artist's paintings which are abstract, so the fraction of the artist's paintings which are pointillist, the fraction of the artist's paint paintings which are realist. And so once I had a vector for each artist, I could just take that, that vector, take a dot product with all the vectors of the other artists, and then you can start to see where there are similar artists. So this, this plot here actually shows where there's groups of similar artists, or, or artists who have similar styles. And then, so once I had that information, I could go back and uh, split the data up into uh, groups of uh, 13. So there, in each group, of, uh, there's uh, um, all the artists in that group are compared to all the other artist paintings in that group. And there are a few, um, a few artists, like uh, Fan Ho has actually a huge number of paintings on WikiArt. They had, there are a few artists with so many paintings, I put a few of their paintings in each group. But the important thing is that Within a group, all the artist paintings were compared to all the other artist paintings in that group. But that still cut down the, the space that I had to ask people for the solution for. Um, so before the competition got going, I also decided I would make a really dumb little random forest classifier benchmark just to see, you know, uh, were people's solutions actually improving on something that was fairly banal. And I actually just said, okay, you know what? I'm not even gonna look at the images. I'm gonna make um, some simple features. And what I picked was uh, sort of the aspect ratio, so the X dimension divided by the Y dimension. And then, um, so the size of the uh, image in, uh, in bits, if you have a JPEG image, divided by the area of the image in pixels. This is actually telling you something about the amount of information in the image. So if you have an image that's like all blue, uh, it doesn't take very much uh, information to encode that image. And in fact, the JPEG will be quite compact. Whereas if you have an image that's more complicated, it's got lots of details in it, it takes a lot more information to encode that image. And so you're gonna have um, a much larger um, amount of information per pixel. So the, the, the size of the image in, in bits in, uh, for a JPEG divided by the uh, area of the uh, image in pixels tells you something about how complex the image is. And in fact, uh, this algorithm, which was quite stupid, came uh, 17th in the competition. Um, so the metric for the problem was the AUC, and I guess uh, all you need to know is it's like not the fraction of the comparisons that got correct, but uh, if, the, if the algorithm just outright guesses, then the AUC is 0.5, and if the algorithm got everything right, then uh, it would, the AUC be, would be 1. Uh, so to make this problem a little bit more exciting, I, uh, in the test set I actually introduced some known forgeries. And there is this uh, Dutch guy, Van Meijeren, he's in the top right, uh, and he, during World War II, uh, he was painting forgeries and then selling them to the Nazis. And the optics of this after the war were not so great, uh, and he actually ended up in court, and where he decided that uh, actually maybe it was less uh, uh, annoying to plead guilty to forgery than it was to plead guilty to treason. So this is how they know that he was forging these paintings. Uh, so in the test set, I put in some paintings by Vermeer, and I also put in some of Van Meijeren's paintings. And so in the bottom left corner of this plot, you can see that uh, the comparison of Van Meijeren's paintings to uh, other paintings by Van Meijeren. Oh yeah, and this is also the, the, um, the student that won this competition is a master's student in Slovenia. So this is actually his, the predictions from his algorithm that I'm, I'm plotting right now. Um, so anywhere you see uh, red, that means the algorithm thought that these two paintings were likely by the same artist. So of course the diagonal is all red because that's just the trivial solution of uh, you, the algorithm sees that painting and then sees the same painting again. Um, but uh, on the whole, um, the, his algorithm, you can see there's more red in the bottom left corner where it's just Vermeer paintings compared to each other. So it did, the algorithm does seem to think that there's something about Vermeer's paintings which is stylistically similar. Um, uh, Van Meijeren's paintings were less stylistically similar probably because he painted actually in a whole bunch of different styles. So that's probably what, why you see that his paintings are slightly dissimilar. The interesting thing is that on the whole, the algorithm thought that Van Meijeren's paintings were mostly dissimilar from Vermeer's uh, from paintings uh, with a couple of exceptions. So there's this uh, painting by uh, Van Meijeren of Jesus with the disciples. And uh, wow, this algorithm really thought this looked a lot like uh, uh, Vermeer's painting of this like mathy guy with this really luxurious carpet in the foreground. Um, so the other thing I did when I set up the problem was I uh, made the test set so that about 80% of the uh, artists were 
they also had paintings in the training set. And about 20% of the artists, the algorithm had actually never seen in the, in, the in the training set. So now I could ask the question, can the algorithm actually learn to extrapolate? And um, the, the algorithm did, the winning algorithm did prove to be much better at um, uh, uh, predicting whether paintings by, uh, where paintings where both artists had work in the training set, the AUC was 0.94, uh, whereas a pairs of images where neither artist had uh, paintings in the training set, the AUC was like uh, 0.82. So it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't as good. So yeah, in conclusion, Kaggle is now hosting a data set with like 100,000 paintings in it. And uh, you can reduce the number of uh, tests in a pairwise comparison situation um, by uh, using genre and style metadata to cut down the number of comparisons. And, and I guess lastly, I mean, I think Siamese networks are super cool. You can, they're a, a setup that you can use to extrapolate to novel data. And uh, although then in that situation, your algorithm is uh, not as good at extrapolating as it is at interpolating. Thanks for your attention.